So I want to reassure you that there's no competition between Boston and Silicon Valley whatsoever, but wouldn't it be cool if you could have a cell phone or a wearable device that could be used to monitor or follow cancer or diagnose cancer? Our next speaker is Dr. Hako Lee, an associate professor of radiology and systems biology at Mass General, who's going to talk to you about miniaturization of devices. Uh, thank you and good morning, everyone. So it is my great pleasure uh, to present my work today here. So um, I'm a physicist by training. So during my PhD, I studied semiconductors and made a little chip to micromanipulate individual cells. And then I joined the MGH as a research fellow to make more practical devices. So I'm applying my experience in knowledge in physics, engineering, computation, to tackle the real world clinical and medical uh, uh, challenges. So my research particularly focuses on cancer, and my group has been developing these mobile and cost-effective systems for cancer detection and also the patient monitoring. So in the world of sensors, we are really in the really exciting uh, moment right now. Basically, small sensors are everywhere. And no wonder it was uh, studied with the miniaturization and the integration of the electronics. Humankind made their first number one transistor in 1956. And now we can put more than <coughs> one billion of them in the area smaller than the you know, post snap. And that concept of a miniaturization and integration has been applied to fluidics. And then they started this field called microfluidics. Now we can have the ability to control this tiny amount of fluid at such a high precision. Past decade, we saw the marriage between these two fields, electronics, microfluidics, that actually gave the unprecedented power to the sensor. High sensitivity and the capacity for multiplex detection. That was interesting, but now we are in the area of more uh, new waves of revolution in the sensor. Sensors are everywhere. Now they are connected to each other and they're talking to each other. And that model can decentralize the medical diagnosis more testings can be delegated from the big lab to the primary care settings and eventually to the hands of the patients. And that's where we want to go and that's the technology that we want to use uh, for our device, uh, device design. So for the past 10 years, we have been working on or making these devices to actually facilitate this liquid biopsy. And as you know, this liquid biopsy is an emerging field that has have huge implication in cancer management. So human blood or patient blood contains these materials ejected from tumor cells. So that could be in the form of free-floating DNAs, tumor cells, or tiny particles called, called extracellular vesicles. And looking at those materials can give us the real-time and in-depth information of the tumor itself. And in this slide, or in this uh, presentation, I'm focusing on the exosomes. It's a tiny particles shed by all the living cells, and including tumor cells. And those exosomes contain RNAs, DNAs, and proteins, just like their uh, parent cells. So you can think of exosomes as a small avatar, uh, as, a, as a tumor cell. So as such, looking into the exosomes is like looking into the tumor cell itself. Now, the major bottleneck in translating this exosome diagnosis into clinics is a lack of affordable and easy to use systems. And exosomes, conventional assay requires extensive uh, purification processes and also involves the high-end detection equipment. And that's where there's a challenge and that's where we want to address the challenge using these small devices. So our lab have, uh, has developed these systems that can speed up and also simplify the exosome analysis. And some of the systems that we have developed include the microfluidic chips that we can enrich the exosomes on the tiny scale. And also we have these plasmonic chips, basically using the light sources to perform this massive scale protein profiling on exosomes. And also we have recently developed this simple device. This is a really small device uh, for point of care or bedside exosome detection. And using these kind of systems, now we are rigorously testing the clinical utility of these exosomes. And our, uh, we use the, the blood samples from brain tumor and ovarian cancer, and look, look at the, the exogen contents uh, in those blood, and our findings are really interesting. So number one, by looking at the exosomes, we can detect a tumor deep inside the body. 
Okay, so we can use exosome for diagnosis. Number two, by monitoring the changes in exosome counts and their composition, we can also check whether the patient is, is responding to the certain treatment. Number three, it's more interesting. When you look at the mRNA markers in the exosomes, we can also predict whether the patient will develop the resistance. So that's this, the story for the just for two tumor types so far, uh, glioblastoma and ovarian cancer. Now we are extending our study to other tumor types, pancreatic cancer and colorectal cancer, to further validate uh, our findings. Now looking on, uh, moving on to the other device that Dan mentioned. So we are also working on bringing this liquid biopsy really to the point of care settings. And to do that, we are making these imaging devices, mobile imaging devices. So basically, we are converting the smartphones that are available everywhere into a mobile diagnostic platform. And we made this small module, basically containing this light source and battery. And then we just, just snap this on to the, uh, to the smartphone camera. And now we have diagnostic devices. And the assay works like this. So we obtain samples either from brain draw, uh, blood draw, or the, the fine needle aspiration. And we just mix them together with these polystyrene beads. And these polystyrene beads will recognize the cancer, and then we will have this cell and bead hybrid. And then we just drop this sample on the slide, uh, put it on the device, and image them. So basic diagnosis is that we just count the number of cells that are bound with bees, and that will give us the initial information. But now we are using camera, right? I mean, smartphone. So we can use the communication capacity of the smartphone to upload the data to the central server over in MGH. And that client and server model allows us to further improve the imaging quality through the you know, digital signal processing, getting the expert to feed that from pathologist in MGH for further validation, and also accumulate data a large amount of data for in-depth analysis. So um, we, we are actually now planning a clinical trials uh, using this system in Botswana. So we are bringing the system funded by NIH, and we will detect the lymphoma at the local hospital in Botswana settings. And we had our initial visit actually this month, and it was quite encouraging. So we trained the local students, local grad students, of, of this assay. And then after that, they can perform the entire assay with just 20 minute training. So we are so excited, and we believe that this liquid biopsy, I mean, the advantage is, is obvious. It's a simpler, safer, it's more convenient than solid, uh, solid tumor biopsy. And at the same time, it can provide real time information on the tumor. And with the advances in these in this sensors, medical sensors, we believe that the liquid biopsy will eventually be a major way uh, to sample the tumor in patients. And in this presentation, I just highlighted two devices that we are kind of explored as a proof of concept. But we don't want to stop there. And actually, we want to actually see, um, our ultimate goal is to see this device to actually benefit the patients. And that's where I actually I want, I'm here to ask for your help. So we are actively looking for the opportunities, partner with the, the industry to make a 3R devices. I call it 3R devices. Reliable, robust, and reproducible. And I want to have happy to discuss such opportunities more after this presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.